Alright, today I'm with Wesley Belanca of Awesome Hollow, and we're going to check out the really amazing stuff they have going on here. What's up, y'all? Welcome to Awesome Hollow. Uh, I want to show you around some of the awesome stuff we have going on here. What you're looking at right here is a info sheet from Oroville, a community in India that is super amazing. And they've provided lots of information on compressed earth brick building. So they have everything from pictures of CEB buildings to uh, what sort of mix of gravel, sand, silt, and clay you want ideally, how to identify the dirt that you have, how to mix it, um, and even how to lay the bricks themselves. So what you see around me is a bunch of uh, rusty metal. This is a open source compressed earth brick machine um, broken down into parts. Um, we were the first group in the world to replicate Open Source Ecology's uh, compressed earth brick maker. And um, right now we've torn it apart, we're sanding it and painting it, and we're going to start making lots and lots of bricks with it. Um, over here we also have a bunch of steel that's going to turn into a badass open source tractor called a life track. But uh, these are the bricks that the compressed earth brick ma maker uh, creates. They're extremely solid and quite heavy. And they are amazing natural building materials. The insulation, both heat and sound, is unmatched. And it's cheap as dirt. <laughs> <laughs> this right here is the wall of awesomeness, where we sort of sketched out all the different tasks that we have around our property. Those that we could do right away, or those that we could do if we had a certain material. So we have something like... A dead tree removal on the property requires a chainsaw, so once we get a chainsaw we can do that. Other stuff like making walking paths and stuff like that we could do with the tools that we have. But down here we have sort of a matrix of the different resources and awesomeness that we have here at Awesome Hollow and how they all interact together. And this is a really rough first sketch. But, um, for example, we have a well on the property. That well provides water. Um, it could provide water for the humans who live here, like myself. It could provide us water for our aquaponic systems, which we'll see in a little bit. Probably my favorite food growing system has to be aquaponics. Um, this right here is actually a hoop house that we designed ourselves um, using the monkey hut design um, that a, a Burning Man participant designed for the playa. It works great for greenhouses too, with some modification. So aquaponics is the marriage of aquaculture, where you're raising fish, and um, hydroponics, where you're growing plants and water. And basically, we've got beautiful grow beds filled with media, like rocks, where we're growing our plants. And they're watered constantly by our fish tanks. Um, right now, we just have goldfish in these systems, but eventually we're going to use tilapia and other food fish. and. Uh, Basically, the fish, when you feed them, they poop, and through uh, what's called the nitrogen cycle, their poop gets turned into nutrients for the plants. So the plants are constantly getting fed tons of nutrient-rich water. The plants then filter the water for the fish, and it creates this beautiful symbiotic cycle. So we've got super delicious and lush veggies and, and herbs and fruits, and uh, a fish yield as well. It's super amazing and it uses 90% less water than traditional gardening. So again, water conservation where you need it most. Wow, well done. Yeah. Over here we have another super excellent water conservation technology for growing food. This is called a wicking bed. Basically it's like a raised grow bed, but underneath the soil layer there's a lining and then there's a layer of rocks. And basically we've created a little underground aquifer underneath the water that we fill up through this PVC pipe. We just fill that up with water until it drains out the drain pipes there. And all of the water is kept uh, underneath the soil and it slowly wicks upward like a candle. The moisture rises so the water is going straight to the roots of these plants and you're not losing water in evaporation. So it's another great way to really save water. You only have to water this once every couple of weeks, even if you're getting no rain, and it produces really nicely. Sweet. Humans, goats, chickens, dogs, guineas, cats, compressed earth brick machines, renewable energy sources, trees, 
trash, black water, gray water, the whole shebang. It's all interlinked in this uh, network. And part of permaculture design is understanding all your resources, how they flow together, and then to create maximum optimal yield out of all those. So they all work together. And uh, what about this guy over here? Just a quick... This you can't really here, see it on the on the video, so just tell us what it is yeah, real quick. Yeah, so this is a list of um, local Austin and Bastrop County um, uh, volunteers, organizations, and resources. So uh, listed here are places like ourselves, Creation Flame and Awesome Hollow. Also the Austin Time Exchange Network that we're uh, friends with is up here. Um, the group Vajra Zaya that we work with is up here. Um, also, lots of uh, people, friends of ours, that are interested in permaculture and sustainability um, and have voiced that they would want to come help with projects out here. We have their name and information listed here, what resources they have, like do you have a truck, do you have access to free mulch, that sort of stuff. Basically, it's a way for us to share information, share resources, and we can have groups of excited volunteers converge somewhere to build something. Empower the is, local community. Exactly, which nice. has happened many times already and is super excellent. So what you see behind me is called a hugel culture bed and it's a huge hugel culture bed. Hugel culture is this awesome technique for uh, growing things where you basically stack logs on top of each other uh, then you want to put some compost and manure on it to get the nitrogen levels up help everything break down and then eventually we're going to cover all of this in soil so it's going to be this huge mound um, it's contoured on our land so it'll catch lots of runoff water and hugel culture is a great way to save water and grow uh, veggies and fruits and things like that because the wood soaks up lots of moisture and releases it slowly over time so if this gets a good soaking we may never have to water it um, or maybe once a month or every two months it's a great way to conserve water which is really important here in Texas where we've endured lots of droughts Awesome. And it's lots of fun piling uh, sticks on top of each other. So bam, there you go. Wow. It's really amazing what you guys have going on here. Thanks for sharing. Thank you.